Hello everybody, my name is Nicole Elliott and I'm a technical analyst and private investor. And last week I warned you that there were some subtle changes in the dollar index uh, um, value. Now it's all very well that you can trade the dollar index, but you can't actually buy anything with it. Similarly, the IMF issues special drawing rights. You can't actually spend them. Um, but the US dollar, you can spend the do dollar itself, but by itself, it's always va its value is always calculated versus another currency or a commodity or whatever. Um, it's, it has the status of the world's reserve currencies, and it got that at, with the Bretton Woods Agreement in 1944. And this gives it several very, very big advantages in terms of trade, in terms of issuing debt, um, in terms of corporate business. But I think the sort of shine is coming off a little bit, and I'm going to show you three different currencies, starting with a daily chart of the Japanese yen, where you can see that it's, it's nothing dramatic. Be careful with all these alarmist headlines that the media is prone to, to adding. But what we've got here, this daily chart of the yen, um, which you can see, has come down in, well, three legs really since uh, March. The first one was a biggish one with a decent pullback. Now in June, we've had a sort of four yen drop. So you need four yen less per dollar. Uh, and then a little pullback, a very sort of, you know, and then now again in July, another four yen drop. So what is important here, it's nothing catastrophic. It's nothing dramatic. The only thing that has attracted media attention is that at these kind of levels today, we're close to the lower levels of the last five years. And the lower level of the last five years creates a right angle triangle. If you have access to charts, or maybe next week I'll show you the big chart, um, but it's a huge right angle triangle with a flat bottom at the psychological level of 100 yen. Now, implied volatility is subdued because the yen is seen as a safe haven currency like the Swiss franc puts on the dollar against the yen are always more expensive. But they're not in, in, in silly, silly. It's all very steady as she goes here. OK, um, but I would expect a test of that 100 yen level. My second chart is a weekly one of the British pound against the US dollar. In FX terms, it's called cable because it was the first transatlantic cable between London and New York to be laid specifically to uh, deal uh, uh, in foreign exchange and in stocks. And as you can see here, cable has dragged itself up off some of its cheapest levels ever since currencies were floated. It's retraced half of the losses of the last two years. So, okay, better than nothing, I suppose. Hopefully the moving averages have turned bullish uh, as the, cloud, the candles have been sort of moving slowly but steadily higher in small steps um, over the last five weeks. And this week, hopefully, we'll close above the top of that descending Ichimoku cloud. And my final chart, is that of the euro dollar it looks very much it's also a weekly one looks very much like the cable one perhaps a little bit more dynamic in that the downtrend was steadier and so now the uptrend looks in contrast a little bit more exciting um it seems to have shaken off its mortal coil um again moving averages are bullish and all the rest of it but what you're seeing here i think you'll agree is dollar weakness so with that in mind it's time to consider, say, the value of gold in euros or, you know, in Japanese yen. In Tokyo, it's traded as yen per gram. And yes, it has gone up quite a lot um, over the last couple of months, but it's not nearly as exciting as those who only picture it as a US dollar per ounce price. Um, that's all for this week. I'll be back same time next week. Hopefully I'll get some more good charts for you.